and welcome to Excellence Academy. Let's look at another problem on combustion analysis, this time involving a compound known as xylene. Question is this. Xylene is an organic compound that is a major component of many gasoline blends and is made up of only carbon and hydrogen atoms. Full stop. A complete combustion of 17.2 mg sample of xylene gave 56.77 mg of carbon dioxide and 14.53 mg of water. Alright, so they said determine the empirical formula of xylene. We have to find just empirical formula. Um, our first task would be let me try to let me try to get out equation of the reaction. Now we said xylene undergoing combustion. We said this gives you xylene. So I have xylene plus since it's combustion, it's mixing up with um, oxygen to give you two expected products, which are carbon dioxide and of course water. So I have this as my product of. Xylene. So I have um, this case here. Um, next up, let me try to get, get out the um, given parameters here. So I'm given that they said 17. What am I giving here? I'm given mass of sample or mass of sample of Xylene. I'm giving this to be about 17.12 mg. 17.12 mg. Also, I'm giving the mass of carbon dioxide in the question as being 56.77 mg. Finally, I'm giving the mass, mass of Water, I'm giving this as being um, 14.53 milligram. Alright, so these are the three given masses in the question. A max of fine and perfect formula of xylene. Now, here's what we know we know that xylene is made up of just two elements, which are carbon and hydrogen. So my task now will be to get the mass of carbon and the mass of hydrogen from this. Now usually, as I said in our last class, we should have used xylene, but since we don't have the empirical formula of xylene, we would improvise and use this one here. So we know that, alright, so we know that, we know that the mass of an element in a compound is equal to mass of the element all over, of course times n, all over molar mass of compound times times given mass of the sample. Now for for carbon for carbon we'll have that this is equal to 
Um, the mass of the element, the mass of carbon we said is a constant, that's 12 times n, number of atoms, which is just 1, all over the molar mass of the compound. The compound considered for carbon, the compound considered is this, as we did in our previous um, class. So this will now be mass of this will be um, carbon is 12 plus oxygen we said is 16 times 2 atoms okay times mass of the sample so for this for this one here the sample width is not by me since I'm considering this one here becomes the mass of carbon 4 oxide instead alright so the sample in this context would be carbon 4 oxide not by me so for carbon dioxide, I have this as 56.77. If I work this out, this would be 12 all over. This would give me 44 times 56.77. So I will have that the mass of carbon would be, um, getting my calculator, this gives 12 divided by 44. Um, times 56.77 that's about 15 15.48 milligram of carbon so I have 15.48 milligram of carbon that's the mass of carbon um, in this circle there next up let's now get the mass of hydrogen. Mass of hydrogen. So this will be equal to mass of the element. The element is hydrogen. Mass of hydrogen is one. So one times n. Of course, for this, to get hydrogen, we use this particular compound as we did in our previous example. That would be H2O. So for n, we said n is equal to the number of atoms. For hydrogen, I have two atoms here. Yeah? So 1 times 2 all over molar mass of the compound, which is this. So the molar mass of, com of compound, which is this. For hydrogen becomes 1 times 2. So 1 times 2 plus oxygen is said is 16 times the mass of the sample. Alright, mass of water given there is 14.53. So having 14.53. What is our this is 2 all over 18 times 14.53. If I punch this up, my point for this is about 2 over 18 times 14.53. I have this as 1.61 milligram of hydrogen. Alright, so I have this value. So therefore, I have that the mass of carbon is 15.48 mg of carbon for hydrogen is 1.61 mg of hydrogen. So I have these values. For me to get empirical formula, I'll have to convert them to grams first. So converting to grams, I have that the mass of carbon in grams is equal to this 15.48 all over 1000 combined to grams that would be about 0 0.015 grams this is the mass of carbon in grams let's get the mass of hydrogen in grams. Mass of hydrogen in grams would be this one here. 1.61 all over 
1000 and that will give me 0 0.001 61 gram of hydrogen. So these are the mass of carbon and hydrogen in grams. So let's now find the empirical formula. Alright, so we are still in a question involving um, how to calculate the empirical formula of xylene. Now we've gotten the mass of carbon and hydrogen in terms of grams as 0.01548 grams for carbon or the mass of carbon and we had 0.00161 grams as the mass of hydrogen. So let's now get the empirical formula of xylene. So we said for empirical formula, we said list out the elements that um, mix up the compound. We said for xylene, it consists of only two elements, that's carbon and then hydrogen. Next up, we said the mass of carbon is 0 0.01548 in terms of grams. Mass of hydrogen is 0 0.00161. For each of these, divide them by their atomic mass. For carbon, the atomic mass of carbon is 12, a constant. Atomic mass of hydrogen is 1, a constant. So if I divide this, I have 0 0.01548. Okay, 0 0.01548 divided by 12. So this gives about 0 0.001129. Divide this by 1, it gives you itself. Although it's advised, please do not approximate this to the nearest to death. Always advise, please, when it comes to this one, please leave it in about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4 or 5 decimal places. The idea is the number of these matters to use, the more accurate your result becomes. Right? So don't, don't just approximate it to 0 0.01 um, to give you something perhaps far from the real answer. So take it in, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 decimal places, or in some rare cases, 4 decimal places. Alright, so after dividing this, I have this value here. My next task will be to divide by. Divide by smallest value. Divide by smallest value. So between these two, the smallest of course is this. It becomes 0 0.00129 divided by this one here, yeah? smallest value. 00129 for this one here. Yeah? 0 0.00161 divided by. 0 point, smallest value, 0, 0, 1, 2, 9. Of course, this one gives you 1. If I punch this, this will give you about um, 0 0.00161 divided by 0 0.00129. So I have something about 1.25 approximately. So at this point, there are usually um, three things here at this point. In some cases, at this point, what you do is um, you, in solving this, in some questions, you have whole numbers, something like one and three straight. In such cases, what you do is just um, take those steps there. In cases, in some other cases, like a previous example, you have terms here such that you have to convert to the nearest whole number as you did in the previous example. While in some other cases, the third one, you have things like this. Now, if I look at this, I can multiply this by a whole number to get, yes, I can multiply this by number to get a whole number. I know from my idea of mathematics, I know that if I... Alright, so the problem now be 
if I have a case like this, how do I know which number to multiply with? So here's an idea you should work with. So I'm having this. So if you want to know a particular number to multiply with, all you have to do is this. I have this, convert this to um, a fraction. So 1.25, 1 1.25 in terms of fraction will be equal to, this will be equal to 125 divided by 100. This will give you 1.25. Reduce this to the lowest term. So 5 divides here gives you about 25. 5 divides here gives you about um, 20. 5 times 20 gives you 100. 5 divides here gives you 5. 5 divides here gives you 4. So at the end, in the lowest term, we have 5 over 4. You take up the denominator. So this becomes the number you multiply with 4. So this is how you do it, okay? So in a case like this, how do I know the number to multiply with? Simply convert this one here into a fraction. So you can see here, take the lowest term. At the lowest term, look at the denominator. The denominator there becomes the number to multiply through. It. So that's how you get the number. All right, let's proceed with our solving. So if I multiply through by 4, I'll have 1 times 4, yeah? 1 times 4, multiply here by 4, I have 1.25 times 4. So this will give you 4, and this will give 5. So therefore, therefore, the empirical formula of xylene of xylene is C4 C4 H5 uh, so I have H5 so I have that the empirical formula of xylene is C4 H5 so this is how we solve this question.